Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is September 23rd, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You got the Gulf of Alaska, BC, Washington, Oregon. Check out the system about to undergo rapid cyclogenesis here, probably reaching bomb cyclone status, which is 24 millibars in a 24 hour period. We're probably going to be looking at a 30 millibar drop. Nice, impressive storm, but the good news is it's going to stay far enough away to spare much of the area from its strongest winds. However, it will bring a nice shot of precipitation with it, and we have potential for an additional system after this one here as we go through midweek coming up we'll be looking at those details here coming up in a moment this is looking at precipitable water and you can see the next slug of moisture with this storm system look at it develop here out over the pacific ocean atmospheric river into the area nice shot of moisture and this is going to look glorious on the satellite imagery they're spinning to the southwest of Haida Gwaii and watch this next system develop here coming into the south of that and really getting a bit closer to land it could cast a fairly decent pressure gradient here along some of the coastal areas and even inland a bit here. We'll be watching that one closely over the next couple of days. Now this is SeaTac yesterday, 76 degrees. Average high this time of year is at 70. No precipitation, but hopefully we can make up this precipitation deficit we've had so far this month. Seven tenths of an inch with 1.6 being the average for September. This is a nice affordable home weather station. If you want to click on this link down below to save 10% off, I highly recommend it. It's got a nice smartphone app, stores all the data for you in the cloud. No batteries, all wireless, all solar powered. And speaking of weather stations and Shepard, you are a member of the channel. You have won the weather station drawing that I did this morning. So go ahead and contact me via email. Congratulations on that again, Ann Shepard. Precipitation forecast through Monday night. Check out Western Washington better along the Cascades, coastal areas, Olympic Mountains here, but still could get up over an inch for portions of Western Washington. Some rain shadowing going on up here to the northeast of the Olympic Mountains. Pretty typical here with the trajectory of these storms. Look at the moderate heavy rainfall for the southern Oregon coast. Brookings 3 to 4, and hopefully this can really extinguish some of the fires and put them out for good across southwest Oregon. The further you go east, of course, you start to get that rain shadowing effect, and you can clearly see it on this map here. Look at North Bend, 1.5 to 2 inches versus Roseburg, lesser amounts across the Willamette Valley. We'll look at some of the models and what they say here as well. Rain forecast for Tuesday here across some of northwest Oregon. You see Portland maybe up over an inch here, higher for the Cascades, and the coastal range also. Some of the models showing a bit less than this across some of the Willamette Valley. We'll look at that, like I said, in a minute. This is the 12Z European. There goes our system today, you know, bringing some nice rainfall across the area, some pretty good amounts across some of the North Cascades into BC, Olympic Mountains. And then again, we get another shot of rainfall. As that strong storm develops out over the water, points that atmospheric river into the region here. And then we're going to get another system after that. Look at going Seattle going up over two inches here. By the time you get towards Thursday morning, according to the European, and you can see a net rain shadow effect for eastern Washington, eastern Oregon, and some of that area off to the northeast of the Olympic Mountains, including the San Juans as well. Now, taking a look here, we've got this week's system moving through today, and this is this morning's European around the 12Z versus last night's, comparing the European versus itself. You can see a system swing through, then our low-pressure system rapidly develops here off the coastline, 960 millibar low atmospheric river into the area. And then I'm kind of watching this next system closely here as well because it's got a pretty good pressure gradient on the south side of this. If this spins up to a 995 millibar low, it could pack a little bit of a punch here, kind of a surprise little... Um, I don't want to say windstorm here, but it could bring some breezy conditions, some gusty conditions to the coastal areas. We're going to be watching this one closely, that secondary development there. Now, taking a look here, wider view of things here. This is the Gulf of Alaska. Here goes the next system out here. You can see by the, what about this afternoon, it's a 993 millibar low, according to the European. Now, let's scroll out four clicks here, which is 24 hours, and see what the pressure is. So, 993 down to 962, 31 millibars in a 24 hour period, that would reach bomb cyclone status. So that's all that it means. It's not meant to scare you out there. It's just kind of a meteorological description of how fast a system develops. Now looking at precipitation on the G up, that's the 12Z run hot off the presses. You can see that precipitation from the weak system initially that's going over us today. And then we've got this atmospheric river starting to bear down on the area. And you can see the total start to rise. We can see kind of the Willamette Valley. The GFS wants to keep things pretty limited there, as you can see. It doesn't look like an inch plus for a lot of the area, according to the GFS. But look at Vancouver Island, the coastal ranges, some of the Cascades getting up over two, three inches. And the GFS, by the time you get towards Wednesday morning, puts Seattle up over two, 2.5. Check it out as that secondary system moves through the area here as well, but lesser amounts across some of the Willamette Valley. And of course, you can see the rain shadowing effects across eastern Washington, Oregon, and check out northeast of the Olympic Mountains there as well. You get some rain shadowing effects there. Much lower precipitation totals 
Now let's see what the GFS has to say about these systems. Now you can see the one moving through the area today and then this one really bombs out. I mean, look at this, has it going down to 958 millibars here. By the time we go on into Sunday evening off the coastline, atmospheric river associated with it. And let's see if it shows that secondary system development. It does, but it is weaker than the European. This would bring some blustery conditions down into Oregon here, but this thing spins up any deeper. It could ca cast a fairly decent gradient all the way up the Washington coast and maybe even bring some gusty winds to the interior of western Washington, down towards Portland as well. Nothing too crazy right now, just something we're going to be watching. Seattle Tacoma, 24 hour period up over an inch of rain here, according to the GFS by the time we go through Monday afternoon and the European going to show in a little bit different timing here. By the time you get to Tuesday afternoon, though, you can see you, an inch plus in probably a 24 hour period. So it's a nice precipitation likely coming for Western Washington. Check out Southwest Oregon as well. Brookings, by the time you get towards Monday afternoon, some nice agreement here between the mean and the control run. Nice precipitation rolling into southwest Oregon with this atmospheric river. Look at Vancouver Island. <laughs> the control run had up, what, 75? That's three inches of rain there. 75 millimeters, 25 centimeters equals one inch. And the mean a little bit less here, but still very impressive amounts. And you can see some gusty winds up for Vancouver Island, especially the coastline, some of the higher peaks out there as well. Quileute, couple rounds of wind coming in here with the first system. You can see some gusts up into the upper 40s. And then that next system out here, pretty good a disagreement there. Uh, you can see some of them going over 50 miles per hour. That low pressure center gets a lot closer to land there. But we have time to watch this, and I'm going to be paying attention to this closely over the next couple of days. This is Hoquiam, a couple rounds of wind, possibly incoming here, gusts up into the 40s, possible. Seattle Tacoma, kind of blustery here, but you can see a little bit better chance of that secondary system as well. We might get some wind gusts 35 towards 40 miles per hour. And again, we'll see how that trends. Newport, Oregon coast, a couple rounds of wind coming in here as well. One initially here as we go through Sunday night into Monday morning, and then again, potentially Tuesday night. Portland, nothing too crazy showing up here, just some blustery conditions. Again, we'll be watching that close. And look at the National Blend of Models. Kind of keeps us suppressed here, and it looks like our very warm days are probably done for the year. You can't completely rule it out, but I'll show you what I mean here in a moment because it looks like there might be a ridge building in the European through the extended forecast. But the 6 to 10 day above average signal here for the Pacific Northwest. Big below average signal here across a lot of the West Coast here through October 3rd. But watch this. As we scroll out on the 12Z European run, you can see this deep trough off the coastline there. That's our deep low. Then the secondary system swings through there, as you can see, midweek. And we hold on this troughing towards the end of the week. But look at this ridge try to build in by the time we get towards next Sunday. And kind of <laughs> look at that. That wouldn't be bad. That'd probably bring some nice temperatures, maybe up into the upper 60s again for Seattle and maybe a little bit warm for the Willamette Valley, back up into the 70s. So you still can get some nice days at this time of the year. And I just want to kind of show you this. It's not out of the question here. So a couple of rounds of precip coming up here, but who knows what's going to come out here. That's still looking way out kind of into fantasy land at 248 hours. You can kind of see it here on the 500 millibar, the control run showing some of these heights building as we get back into it early portion of October, but no promises here. Kind of just a fantasy forecast for some nice weather. And we need this precept coming up here because you can see and comparing the last two weeks, you can see some severe drought was introduced across portions of Oregon, extended down the Cascades into King County here across Washington as well. So hopefully we can wipe out some of this drought across much of the Pacific Northwest. And just showing you, we've been very warm and dry. This is actual data here, June 25th through September 22nd. We've been extremely dry, actually, across western portions of Washington, Oregon, some places between 5 and 25% of normal precipitation. A lot of places like Seattle, between 25 and 50%, and a lot of western Oregon there also. And you kind of see the track of Tropical Storm Hillary as it brought above average conditions across much of the southwest, California, and Nevada. This is temperature as well. We've been above average temperature-wise. You can see much of the area, 2 to 4 degrees above average. Pretty significant there. And again, a three-month period from June 25th to September 22nd. So anyway, yeah, I'll probably be doing my El Nino video tonight. I'm going to try to release it here by like 7 or 8 o'clock so you guys can get a chance to watch it before you go to bed tonight. And I'll just kind of talk about the general circulation of El Nino. You know, I'm not trying to write, uh, you know, a scientific... I'm not trying to write scientific literature on it here and explain it to you guys. I'm trying to make it fairly simple here and just let you guys know what the general circulation is. We're going to go over some cool data on stuff on the West Coast, like for Seattle and Portland and Sacramento, Los Angeles and Las Vegas. And we'll go over what El Nino generally means. And we'll compare it to some past El Ninos here also. 
Um, yeah, but you know the sample size is still it's still fairly small because you only get strong El Ninos every once in a while. But we'll discuss that in the video tonight. Hopefully, I have it released then. I've been going down some rabbit holes looking at data here, so that's why it's been delayed so much. But anyway, yeah, here goes our system out here developing another system potentially after that one. And then, of course, we'll always monitor the extended forecast. I'll do my normal briefing tomorrow no matter what, even if I don't have the El Nino video out tonight. But I'll try to do that also. So anyway, again, Ann Shepard, contact me. You won that weather station. Hope you guys are having a good day. Hope you guys enjoy the rainfall over the next few days here as well. And I will talk to you guys tonight or tomorrow.